James chapter 5, beginning in verse 10. And I'm going to read all the way through verse 12. It says, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. The whole, I think the whole message this morning, and James had a lot, I think he had a lot that the Lord gave him concerning this matter that we speak of this morning, is the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. And there's been a lot of, I think, error taught concerning the power of the tongue. There's a lot of truth there as well. But I think this morning that as we go into this, we'll see in a little bit better light what he was speaking of because, first of all, we look through 10 and 11 and it speaks of suffering affliction. Having the prophets, his brethren, the prophets, as an example of the affliction that he spoke of. Now, we don't have to search too hard in the scriptures to find a prophet, a true prophet of God that suffered. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. To know that the true prophet of God will suffer. <laughs> they will be friendless at times. Many of the time, many, much of their life, they will have no friends on this earth. But they've got a friend who is closer than a brother. And church, as long as we have Jesus, <laughs> We can face anything. Amen. As long as we have Jesus as that friend who is closer than any brother, whatever comes our way, we can face it. We can handle it. We can go with it because we have him that's with us that will lead us through all that we face. The trials that, that we you know come to, he, he will get us through those things. He will get us past it because it's always there for a reason. Now, I don't want to get bogged down too much in this, but remember, God is in charge of everything. Mainly, He's in charge of His people. Please remember that this morning. Are we allowing Him to have His way within us? Do you realize to know that as being a child of God that what care that we have, what provision that we have, what has been provided for us as being a child of God, that we're not out there on this, this, this life on our own. We're not out there searching and scrambling and, and groping in the darkness, wondering What's next? We're not out there, you know, without without clue, not knowing which way we're going. Well, church, I'm gonna tell you what this life is a road. It's a road that we're traveling. Yeah. Not so much the things that we do from day to day, but spiritually speaking, we're on a road. And we're traveling this road. We're traveling this highway. We're traveling the King's Highway. When we're walking with Jesus. And you know that doesn't always have the picture of a road that is well traveled. It doesn't always present the picture of a great broad way. But Jesus spoke of it as straight. Straight place, a straight, was a straight path. 
It's a narrow way that leads unto life. And he said, few there be that find it. And church, we need to stay on it. We need to stay on that path. We need to stay on the straight and narrow. And it's by every day just realizing and understanding that this is, this is nothing to do about me, but it's everything to do about him. But it's about keeping my will lost in his will, allowing his will to come to the forefront of everything that involves me. You know what, church? That, that brings freedom to the child of God. Because we're not trying to make something happen. We're not trying to build something up, to build up our own kingdom. There's too much of that going on. Well, we are just simply a part of building the kingdom of God upon this earth and being used in whatever capacity that God our Father chooses for us to walk in, chooses for us to be a part in. Because it's all about giving glory unto Him anyway. You know, that that's not always an easy, it's never, let me just say it, it's never easy. It's never easy that our will comes second to His will. But it's in the good fight of faith that we every day, we keep getting up and we fight that good fight of faith. We, keep, we know that our faith is in the one that has fought for us. Our faith is in the finished work that took place at the cross of Calvary. We know that this work that he's working on in me, that it ain't something that I can do. It ain't something that I might know my, oh, I've got some good ideas sometimes, but it's just what it is, just leave it there and just let God have his way. Just let God move in my life. Just let God move in your life. Whatever capacity that he wants to move in, at whatever speed that he wants to move in, that we rest in him, that we choose that when our faith is in him, and it's in his sacrifice, it's in, and it's continually there, then there is a mighty work going on within my life. I said there is a mighty work that's going on in my life. It ain't just some small, insignificant work, but it is a mighty work going on within the child of God who will choose to continue to walk this path, who will choose to continue to let God have his way. Who will choose to continue to obey what God says to do. Who will choose to continue to believe. Because the rest of it. If we, if we try to do the rest of it any other way. We're in trouble. We have to believe. Amen. We have to believe. I have to believe. You get up every morning and say, I have to believe. Every morning, my job is what? To believe. To continue to believe. To continue to believe. And you know what? All this other stuff will just come into, into play. It'll just begin to line up. We'll just begin to see, and we don't always see it. We never see it as quick as we want to. But we will, if we will not give up, but if we will patiently endure, that as we consider the patience of Job, you know, Job wasn't necessarily patient, but he had perseverance. He didn't quit. He didn't give up on God. He didn't curse God and die like he was advised to do. He didn't give up. He never stopped believing. So sometimes we, we're going to have maybe some good and bad days. Sometimes it just may seem like if we're not careful, a small complaint will come out of our mouth. Because it ain't hard to find one, is it? If we're not careful, a little bitty complaint we'll hear about from our ears will come out of our mouth. 
Consider Job. Consider Job. Wow, what a what a test that he went through. And I, I had it. I guess you could say on my to-do list this week, but I just didn't do it. I was going to read the book of Job. Just to get stirred back up on it. So I I pray God just helps me in this and just this gives me what I need, and I just trust and believe that he's in charge this morning to give you what you need. But I encourage you this morning to do like me and make it a point to go back and read the book of Job. Just make it a point and ask God to help you. Because we can't do it in our own ability, can we? It's just letting God go in us, changing us. But it's our position in this, our, our place to say, is to keep believing. Doesn't mean we're not going to have some affliction. Doesn't mean we're not going to walk through some hard things in this life. If someone stands up in front of you and tells you that you'll never have a hard thing to stand up against, you better go the other way. When you're serving Jesus Christ, when you have made him the Lord of your life, I want you to know this today. That our wills are never easily broken out of the way. We got we just gotta keep it every day in him. It ain't it don't come easy, but it comes by the grace of God working in us. He is he it says that we have seen the end of the Lord, that he is pitiful, the scripture says, means that he shows pity unto us and he is full of tender mercy Amen. I hope somebody gets a hold of that this morning Amen. and we serve a God that is merciful Thank you, Jesus. he is full of tender mercy yeah. mercy that comes across just the way we need just for us sister Ellen just for what we're going through, Sister, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. Brother King's wife, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> whatever it is we're facing, whatever it is we're enduring, whatever it is we're persevering through, know this, that we serve a God that's right there with us. He's full of tender mercy. Now, because the first thing we want to do is we want to complain. We want to murmur. We want to get an attitude, if you will. Trust me, it's, it's, it resides within the heart of man to complain when he doesn't get his way. It's there within the heart of man. But God, the Holy Spirit, wants to change that about his people. I say this, God, the Holy Spirit, that's going to change that about for every person who will keep saying yes to Jesus and keep trusting and believing and knowing that it was paid for at that cross, everything that, that is for me in this life, he made a provision for it. Now, we have to set ourselves in agreement with that. We have to, when we say yes to Jesus, we need to be serious about that. We need to be serious about continuing to say yes. Knowing that this life that we have today, I said a while ago, this don't come easy. This life that we have today, that we're not going to cling to that and cling to him at the same time. It's him or nothing. I said, it's, it's him or nothing. When we start trying to balance our focus out, to try to balance our, our desire and our concern, you know, everything, and trying to split it to where we can be over here, you know, what they call that straddle of the fence. Kind of gives you a new, a new enlightenment on what it means to straddle the fence. But when we're trying to hold on 
to this life with one hand and we're trying to hold on to God with the other. Church is just better to let go and let's just hold on to God. No matter how good it may be in your life right now or how bad, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we serve a God that knows where we're at. He is full of tender mercy. And in that is, I'm going to tell you right now, that is a good place to know we can trust in that kind of God. We can walk with Him. We can talk with Him. And we can come to the garden and know that he's there waiting for us. To know that when he speaks, we listen. When he, when he talks to us, he's, he's, he's directly, he, he's giving full attention to us. It ain't like, you know, we're just in a, a big crowd of folks and he's just making an address, but he wants to talk to us personally. He wants to speak to us directly. But we need to go to the garden. I'm just referring to one of those old songs to them. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Praise God. Maybe the first thing that we do, church, not the last, maybe the first thing that we do, and I know we're human beings. We ain't always the easiest to get along with you the first thing in the morning. Amen. <laughs> we may have some issues first thing in the morning. The first thing we want to try to do for in, that, in my house is we're going to make coffee. That's just the first order of the day. But you know what? <laughs> I see I see one lady had her shirt on the other day and says, I need coffee. And then in parentheses it says, and a donut. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed. That, that's so true a lot of time. But you know what? The whole time, from the time that we get up and we go about our business, I mean, even if we're going to the coffee to get it ready, get it, you know, for us, our minds on Jesus. We may be having a hard time seeing, we may have a hard time speaking very clearly. But at least we can say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. At least we can say praise God for another day. Thank you that I was able to get out of bed this morning. Amen. Thank you that I got a coffee box. Thank you that you gave man the, the ability to, to learn what those beans you put there and that they could roast those beans. You ain't got to, if it's just in your mind, you can reflect on that and give God glory for it. Amen. Give him praise. Because he's good, church. Amen. And he's full of tender mercy. Yes. Now let's look at verse 12. Let's look at verse 12. It says, But above all things, my brethren, swear not. Now this comes in many varied forms, many different ways of the things that we say that we shouldn't say. It's not simply just talking about using those four letter words that I know none of y'all know anything about because those things were in our past, amen? Brother Mark. Yes, sir. The, the, the swear, I mean, is that, is that like a manifest, I never really thought about it kind of like a manifestation of I swear then I'm what I'm doing is I'm putting my power and my ability ahead of God ahead of God you know, that's right I'm going to do this I'm going to make sure that's so, right there's a few places in the scripture where the, the Bible says the Lord swears that's right and he that's swore right. to Abraham he promised to David which I guess I don't know if it says swear there and he swore to Christ you know, you are a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. So he made it with an oath. Yes. He made an oath to David. He made an oath to Abraham. But, like, I never thought about it. Why swearing was wrong is because I'm, I'm backing this up. That's right. We're making God subservient to our will. 
is, is basically the root yeah. that Brother Roger is bringing out. Which always, we're to be subservient to his will. And if, and if we just haven't ever really realized that, about the things that we say and the, the reason that we say them, and I'm not just, you know, I'm not just talking about profanity. Now, that, that, we know that that's not even, shouldn't even be an issue. If it is, there's an answer for that. Praise God for the answer. Amen. His name is Jesus. Yes. He's the answer for it all. But we never, we never put God in a place, we never put our place, ourselves in that place, I'll say it right in a minute, that God is now supposed to do what I want or what I command. And there used to be some teaching about that, that, that believers could get to a particular place in their faith that they could order God around. That's error. Well, that, that particular scripture has a question mark after exactly. it. Exactly. 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 But many didn't teach it that way. Right. They taught it after the manner that we had the right to do that. But no, we're never, the child of God is never to remember. I mean, never to forgive. Always to remember what God brought us from. That's right. And who brought us from. That we didn't get it by our own power. It's, and this is getting a little bit, well, I'll, I'll, let me go there. In verse 12, it says, Swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. That right there is not, doesn't mean that we're not at times if need be to be under oath in the court of law. That's, that's not what that's talking about. But as Brother Robert pointed that out, that we never make it, that we never, we need to always remember the importance of what we say. It's important of what we say. It's very important of what comes out of our mouth. You know, the Holy Spirit, I love the moving of the Holy Spirit on me. I love how he makes me feel. I love it. I thank him for it. I thank him for his leading and his guiding, but you know what? Excuse me. He doesn't just make us feel goosebumps. He doesn't just make us exceedingly glad to where we're shouting and we're praising and we may have a little dance in our step. He does that. Amen. And we like that. But he doesn't just do that. He gives us direction. He won't. I mean, I realize the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. But for those who will who, who are surrendered to him and, and want to please him, he will instruct for you to go tell someone you're sorry. He will tell you to tell that person that I was wrong. He will instruct you to admit that you was wrong. See, that's very important that we deal with these matters. Not just let it go. Not just, you know, God, I'm sorry, I've done this to this person. I hurt this person. And I realize sometimes that we may not get a chance right then to, to be with that person. But if, if we have the chance, then we're supposed to say to that person, I was wrong. And I'm sorry. Yes. Now, you know, another thing is I, I think a lot of times the presence of God comes in the church. Yes. And I think he comes in to, to do a work. And I think we just enjoy his presence and we get to thinking about ourselves. And the presence comes and with, with his presence comes peace, joy, love, and all those things. And we we, we don't listen. 
right. what the Lord might be wanting to do. I heard about one presbyter of the Assembly of God. He said he was in a meeting one time and the presence of God swept through the place. And he said it was all I could do to hold on to the chair and not run down the aisle shouting and dancing. Mm -hmm. He said, but I just felt led that I, 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 I could have done that. He said, but I felt led that's not what the Lord wanted to do. That's not why his presence came. I could have reacted to the presence in that way. He said, but yes. I, 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 I didn't quench the spirit, but he said, I, I, I kept myself under control. And he said, there was somebody in a wheelchair. And he said, the presence of God came through again. That person got up out of the wheelchair. He said, I felt that if I would have misinterpreted what God wanted to do, that I would have missed that we would have not had that happen because the emphasis would have been on everybody shouting and right. running. And there's a place for that. There right. are times right. right. But I think a lot of times when the presence comes, it comes for a reason. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. a lot of times what we need to do is ask the Lord, what, what does he want us to do? Does he want us to listen? Do we need to go to somebody like you say? Do we need to minister to somebody? Yes. You know what I'm saying? And sit, because we can yield to the Spirit and, and, and we can miss it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And what the Lord really wants to do, you know, when His presence comes, like you're talking about. Amen. Well, this, the important thing is to remember that when the Holy Spirit has His way, nobody thanks the Lord for it but Him. Right. And our job is just that be our cry, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your And it starts within me. It starts within you. It starts in a, on a person. It's, it starts within the person. Lord, have your way. Do what you want to do. Lord, we've got plans. We've got things of how we think things are going to go. But God, we want what you want. Have your way in me. And the more people that will come in agreement with that and say that, I believe we can see some power of God fall when we are gathered together. Not that the power doesn't fall, but I mean, we can, we can continue to see it. You know, and, and not be so much focused on, you know, the, the things people get focused on sometimes, other than the Lord, but just keep your eye focused on Him. Worship Him, praise Him, glorify Him. Church, we never, we never have a reason not to praise Him. We never have a reason not to glorify Him. All we've got to do is think about Calvary. All we've got to do is reflect on what he done for us. Yeah. All we've got to do is just remember that. And that I'm talking about that ain't just for when we're here. I'm talking about that. That's for tomorrow. That's for this afternoon. That's for in the morning. That's, that's why you're on your job. Reflect on what he's done for you. Think about it. And just start letting them praises come out of your mouth. He'll, he'll give you a new song to sing. It'll give you a song you ain't never heard before. And it's all about just thanking Him. And it's all about just praising Him. And letting the Spirit of God flow through us. And, 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 and it's about touching people. Yeah. It's about touching people. People need to see and, and experience the child of God interacting in that manner with their God. Because we have that. We have that opportunity. We have that interaction, that constant flow coming to us and moving through us. Coming to us and moving through us. It's about reaching the lost. It's about touching our brothers and sisters in Christ. They, people, people don't hear the things we hear here everywhere. They're not taught the message of the cross in many places. They're not taught the importance of it. They're not taught that that is the true unadulterated gospel of Christ that changes hearts, that, that heals sick bodies, that restores, that leads beside the still waters, that causes us to lie down in green pastures. When, the, when God shows up, when the Spirit of God moves upon an individual, He wants to restore that person in completion. Mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally. Whatever way, whatever is needed, trust me, he is able. He is more, has more than enough power to do that. I've got to hurry up. 
because I've got a scripture that I've got to share with you. We're not going to get past verse 12, but that's okay. I want to look. I've got so much written down here. I can't even, yeah, let's see. Philippians chapter 2, very quick, very quick. Philippians chapter 2. I said something earlier. And I want to show you in scripture where I got this from and know that this is real. That this is of God. That it ain't just something that I thought was a good idea. It ain't just something that I made up. Philippians chapter 2, I'm going to just begin reading in verse 9. I'm going to read all the way through. I think I'm in the right place here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. That ain't where I need you to go, but we're going to read it anyway. I'm on, but I'm going to get to the next one because this is good too. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, he says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, speaking of Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue, we're talking about what comes from our mouth, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not only in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. There's that word work. People get that messed up. They don't understand what he's saying here. But listen, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But the next, very, very next verse, it says, For it is God which worketh in you. For it is God which worketh in you. Church, I'm, I'm telling you some good news this morning that it is God that's working in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. Amen. It is God that works within you. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, he says, Study yep. to show yourself approved unto God. Yep. A workman. Not needing to be, a, not, not worried about being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Yes. A workman, meaning that there's a work going on in that man. There's a work going on in that woman. It ain't just about the doing of it, but it's about who's doing the doing. It's about who's doing the work. I want to be that kind of worker. Oh, yeah, the, the, the person that's got God working in them, you're going to find them doing something for God. You're going to find them working for the Lord. But to be that workman that needs what? Not to be ashamed. You know, there's something about being in His presence. And one of these days, we're going to see Him face to face. We're going to see him face to face one day. And we don't really know what we're going to do, do we? We don't know if we're going to not be able to move. Falling flat on our face. If he's going to allow us, as the song sings, to dance before him. Just fall to our knees. But the most important thing that we not be ashamed. Because we have no shame when we're in Him. He took our shame. He took all of that and when He died at the cross, He gave it all for us. He took the penalty of death even. Now I gotta, I gotta get to where I gotta go. Lord, please help me here. Colossians, this is the very next book over. And I'm gonna stop with this and I'll run out of time. I got this new Bible, and these pages are still sticking together. It shows you I ain't been through every one of them yet. So. <laughs> it says, verse, I uh, say, chapter 1, verse 10 in Colossians, it says, That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's that work, that study, to show thyself approved. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power. Unto all patience and all suffering with joyfulness. See, the church has sometimes got it wrong when they think that, oh, we want the power of God, but we don't want it to change us. First of all, he says, with all patience 
and long suffering and joyfulness. That's what the fire of God wants to do with us. He wants to change us. Give thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance. We have an inheritance church of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I'm not going to have time to read all this, but I got, I'm going to skip down a few verses. I'm going to skip down to verse 26. It says, even the mystery which has been hid from the ages, from generations, now is made manifest to the saints. The Lord himself made reference to this, to his disciples, that there are many prophets and many righteous men, that they would have seen the things that they saw and that they would have heard the things that they heard, but they didn't see and they didn't hear it. But those things that the disciples were seeing and hearing while Jesus was here with them. Many, he said, many of the prophets and the righteous men desired to see it, desired to hear it. Or man says, <clears throat> To God who would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is in Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is where we're going, church. Yes. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his, and here we go, striving according to his working, which worketh in me might. Amen. Paul the Apostle, chosen by God to bring this mystery of Jesus Christ right. to this world right. that was desired to, to be seen and heard from generations and generations ago, but now we have it, church. Amen. He's full of mercy, tender mercy. Praise God. Thank y'all for coming and being a part of the class today. And God bless you. So just remember, we've got a good time up ahead, good praise, good worship. And the presence of the Lord, let it flow. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. God bless you.